Barbell Shrugged is brought to you by you. To learn more about how you can support the show, go to barbellshrugged.com and sign up for the newsletter. My coffee. <sighs> Welcome to Barbell Shrugged. I'm Mike Bletzer here with Doug Larson, Christopher Moore. Yep. Got CTP behind the camera. And our beautiful guest, Jackie Perez. Hi, Jackie. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice we're in Memphis, Tennessee. We're not on the coast. Usually, if you see Jackie, she's on the beach somewhere. I got kidnapped. I, uh, yeah, I kidnapped her and brought her back to Memphis. Yep. I just happened to be living like an hour away from her. You, know, you have two hours to decide if you want to go to Memphis on Wednesday. I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> and then her boss called me. Hours yeah. later, <laughs> what are you doing with Jackie? He's like, you're doing We're what? We're taking her away to a new life in luxurious <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, yeah. yeah. Well, how have you liked it so Here's far, Jackie? Cool. It's different. It's cool. I saw a train. <laughs> <laughs> I, did. I haven't seen a train maybe since I was little. So it's easy to impress. Cool. Choo-choo. <laughs> That's right, Jackie. It's a choo-choo. <laughs> we had to like explain to her like what the train's for. and uh, We also had, uh, we had some barbecue. We had barbecue. Which we all, we all went and ate barbecue yesterday for lunch. And then we all went back to Chris's house and took a nap. Belly up. Like we all like <laughs> spread out on couches and in These beds things happen when you eat deviled eggs, coleslaw, beans, <laughs> ribs, sausage, <laughs> cheese for lunch. <laughs> you know, a light lunch. You leave ready to stretch out. You know, get back to work. Look at you split. Oh, man. That was epic. The you know, opposite happens. You pay for that meal. Last night you got to eat with my, uh, my mom and my brother. That was one of the best experiences I've ever had for dinner. It was, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much I could say, but it was No, you can amazing. say whatever you want. <laughs> no, I, I should. She's like, oh, man. I don't want to put your mom I'm going like to be that. polite here. <laughs> Mike's like, explain what you think about my mom she, to the whole awesome. world. She was awesome. We had like the best, we had the best <laughs> conversations. We'll yeah. give the Cliff Notes version for the audience. Everything you see in Mike, it is present and more potent in various forms yeah. in every member yeah. of his family. <laughs> especially, the, especially the Bledsoe women. In a women. different way. It was yeah, it's a, it's a sitcom, really. I mean, every, yeah. every personality is that distinct, but yet somehow still, I mean, crazy is a harsh word, intense. <laughs> Bledsoe, <laughs> Bledsoe-ish. It's entertaining, to say the least. Yeah, it's wild. It's like uh, one of his brothers said to the audience, if you could imagine a sorcerer coming out like Harry Potter style and waving a wand, and turning a pit bull into a human being. That's just, that's one of your brothers. <laughs> 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 just imagine this like an intense, loving, but dangerous creature. And then Nick is a sweetheart. The one you met. Right? Yeah, he's yeah. awesome. They're all, well, they're all sweethearts, but Matt will, will can be dangerously sweet. If that makes sense. Nick's living the life. Yeah, Nick yeah. is living the <laughs> life. <laughs> I think we could probably talk about that. Here. <laughs> Do I think, it. I think yeah. we should. Uh, my little brother Nick has two girlfriends. <laughs> they approached. And they know each other. They approached him <laughs> together. They're girlfriends. Yeah, they're girlfriends, <laughs> and they were like, "I think we need a boyfriend together." <laughs> and they went and got him, and he was like, "What should I do?" I was like, "It's like be very careful." <laughs> First off, <laughs> high five. Buy two, <laughs> buy two flowers. Well. Don't buy one flower. Buy two. Oh, he messed up. He messed up last week. He bought a single flower, and, he, and we were like, "What were you thinking?" He goes, wow. I, "I don't know." Like, like, you got to tell him, son. There's twice the potential for awesome payoffs in this situation, and there's also twice the potential for disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed carefully. Dude. We're talking about if, if they get mad at him, they team up on him, so there's no winning, ever. Twice the chance to be a dad. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I don't know why I hadn't thought about it like uh, that. But <laughs> there's twice uh, of everything. Yeah. Everything. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> but if they really enjoy being around him, there's definitely double the upside. <laughs> I have mixed emotions about it. A lot of them are jealousy. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Uh, we uh, we had you on a few months ago, which was at regionals. We we're like, oh, you should come over to the house. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Hey, There's a lot yeah. of kidnapping happening with me and Jackie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's not creepy. It's, no. it's so bad that you just say you want to come here, and I'm like, let's go. <laughs> I don't know. Easy to convince. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, uh, you came over to the house that day. We podcasted. You didn't know what to expect. And then afterwards, you were like, oh, there's like all these things I want to say differently, or there's these things I should have said. There's so much like, I not, shouldn't have said. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> a couple of things you thought you shouldn't have said, but yeah. everyone loved it anyway. Yeah. Uh, that was an all-star show. But I, 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 I disagree with you. I think you said everything you should have. But you've got a lot more to say. Uh, because you actually you post a lot of things on Instagram, and you've got a lot of fans, and uh, you're very inspiring to women to, you know. Uh, somebody posted just the other day, um, 
that they decided to work out just because they saw someone on Instagram. They they were they were contemplating, oh, maybe I should do CrossFit or maybe I shouldn't. And they saw the picture and then that and then your picture for some reason it was like, okay, I'm gonna go. Yeah, those are my favorite stories. And someone's like, I started CrossFit because of you. I'm like, that is the whole reason I have an Instagram. Like, I want people to be like to see the beauty within it through what I'm doing, not just because someone's telling them to or giving advice on it. Just see it and if you like it, do it. And most are like, I'm so happy I did it. So that that's awesome. Yeah. A uh, quick bio on you a little bit. I mean, we can always go back and watch the other one as well or listen to it on iTunes, but uh, you're a coach at CSA Gym. Um, where's that at? Uh, that, I know it's in Northern California, but I don't go Yeah, there. Northern California, Dublin, California. Okay. Yeah. It's an amazing, cool gym. It's you guys got CrossFit? Amazing. CrossFit. Powerlifting. And Our boy MMA. Jesse Burdick yeah. coaches the powerlifting. Yeah. Katie Hogan's there. Yep. You guys do mixed martial arts, right? Mm -hmm. Have the whole shoot and match. Yep. Anything you want to do, you we can do here. We have full MMA, cage, ring, uh, Krav Maga, Jiu-Jitsu, all of it. Everything. Krav Maga, even. Yeah, everything. It's awesome. Krav Maga scares me. <laughs> Krav, Krav is like the Krav Maga of fitness, right? Like, <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> 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 Take a punch. <laughs> uh, before we go any further, make sure to go to barbellstrug.com, sign up for the newsletter. We'll inform you when we're, we post these podcasts or do other cool stuff. Which seems to be all the freaking time. So I start off way too formally. When, when people, well, when people, uh, they go, oh, I didn't know you were going to be doing this or that. I'm like, are you signed up for the newsletter? <laughs> Secondly, are you opening it and reading it? Because if you do, <laughs> you'll know what's going on. I promise. I didn't get the newsletter. Did you sign up? No. Do you have a computer? <laughs> no. You check your mail? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these are your habits. <laughs> uh, you live such a lifestyle, Chris. You I get emails from Doug now all the time, ever since I signed on the Barbell Bikini thing. So I get some cool inspirational words <laughs> in my mail. Emails from me that CTP probably wrote. <laughs> more than likely. Thank you. <laughs> Don't let your secrets out, Doug. It's <laughs> your name. You take credit for those oh, emails. Man, I felt like you were talking Thanks to put me. My name I thought on it was that. so personal. I thought it was Doug's <laughs> talking to me. Some people do think that's so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, we've been talking a lot about the Barbell Bikini program. What do you think about that overall? I think it's I, it's everything I ever wanted to do and put out for women, and you guys did it. And you, uh, I mean, you guys went above and beyond with the videos and, and the food stuff. Like, every question I had to see if you guys were ready for that, you guys were like, oh, we're on that. We have that. <laughs> we done. have our shit yeah, so no, piled just, up and together. You wouldn't I, believe just it. It's so well thought out. I think it's like the... If I was going to give a program to a female that was like, Jackie, what do I do? I want to lose weight. I want to look good this summer. I'd be like... This is exactly what you should do. And there's no guesswork. It's all taken out. So it's everything I ever wanted to do, but you guys already did it. <laughs> so it's wow. even better. We Thank you. That. Oh, by the <laughs> way, uh, I, we don't do the shameless plug very often or the advertisement, but if you're a lady and you want to get leaner, check out barbellbikini.com. Yep. Sign up for that. Uh, and we'll keep you informed on that, specifically outside of the newsletter. Yep. So we yeah. try not to bombard our entire newsletter list with everything that's going on all the time, just the things that you might be interested in. We're more savvy than that. Come on. <laughs> well, we at least pretend to be <laughs> savvier than that. So, if ladies, if you want to look good by next summer, like start right now, like today. <laughs> like, don't wait till after don't, Christmas. Yes, but Jackie, yeah. that's not good enough for me. Yeah, no. If you come to me like February, got, like make gotta, me look good by summer, I'm like, sorry, you're fine. I got to go to the pool <laughs> two weeks. Can I look good by then? <laughs> Find a really good swimsuit. Just hide <laughs> all the curves. Yeah. Or how about I spring a lot of boost? Or everybody gets drunk and they think I'm the hottest thing in the that's party. That's even better. That's, even, that's you your get, solution. Or you can get so drunk that you feel really cute. Like, you know, you're fucked both up. Both things but you look work. in the mirror, you're like, damn, I look well, good. Well, ideally, you do both. That's what we call a party yeah, that's, okay. that's how i feel after a night okay. of partying okay, you can man, work like, hard I'm so dehydrated you can work oh. hard <laughs> you can work hard you'll be disciplined you can build exciting life reforming habits yeah you can be spiritually healthy yeah you can be well fed or you can get fucked up hey, alcohol hey, has hey. great powers <laughs> so the next day and you're like Fuck. <laughs> so you see all these pictures we are of you course you're like joking <laughs> jackie is all about workout party repeat but you're actually way more on the work part of this workout slash party spectrum than people would gar get garner from the first episode I yeah think. you for work sure. way harder yeah. than people i do i do and your instagram would probably yeah i don't give myself enough credit you don't for sure. i don't think you do not on party as hard as i say just because i drink Every other night doesn't mean I party. I just drink. Like, it's an occasional. Like, have a drink. Like have like, one uh, drink. Yeah, like two. Like, <laughs> She's like, oh, no. This is how it started two last time. Well, no. it, just, like, it just snowballed. No, well, one does nothing for you. What's the point of one? Like, let's be honest. You want to get a I little. I like your style. You want to just get a little. 
<laughs> you just have one pint of ice cream. Yeah. At least two. Yeah. Uh, my, my take on Jag is more of balance. You work really hard. but I, dude, I work. I party as hard as I work, and I work really hard. You understand that a little bit of partying allows you to work hard yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. like you gotta, you, know, you, you wouldn't work earn, hard. You got to earn your party. I don't think you would work hard. Oh, I don't think you would party at all if you didn't have a benefit to help you enjoy True. training more. True. That's what my suspicion True. is. I, yeah. yeah, of course. So do you get a lot of emails from from women wanting to get lean like within a couple of weeks or two months uh, or like every, some unrealistic time frame? Every client I've ever had, it's like, okay, will I get a six pack in like two months? No. Will you go in six months? No. Will you go in in a year? Maybe you'll look better than you do now, but they don't understand. It's like a years of process. It's like you're gonna look better, but you're not gonna see that body that you're coming to me saying make me look like this you're not gonna see that and i don't want to lie to them i could lie be like yeah give me your money i'll make you look like that but i'm like realistically no and they're like well what if i eat really clean i'm like if you eat clean and you work out really hard it's still gonna take six plus months to see the results that you want to see well so. the other thing we talked we talked about a little bit yesterday was uh women say hey how can i look like you mm-hmm. and you go hey we're even if you need to be the best version of yourself. Yeah, exactly. Just focus on being the best version. You'll never look like me, and you don't want to look like me. You want more curves. I mean, I hate that I have no waist. I mean, you might look better than I ever will, but we all have our own, you know, genetics. We all have our own bodies, and you're never going to look like the person you're saying, make me look like that. You might look like a way better version than them. You don't know what's down there until you lean out and you find it, and you build it through exercise. The only way, I mean, through lifting, the only way that you can build the body you want is through strength training. That's what you do. You grow your muscles. You want a bigger ass, then work your legs and your ass. You know, you want to tighter stomach just make it tighter but you gotta lean out that's when you can't change too much that is what it is that's the frame that you got and a lot of people don't understand that like make me look like you you'll never look like me but you might look even better you might have a better structure than i ever had so. you work in some motivational like marketing else too like you might have what it takes yeah. if you work hard. <laughs> if you there work might hard. be a sexy bitch underneath yeah. there if you if you work if hard. you want to find <laughs> it hey, if you want to seriously yeah. if you want to lean out and find it it's there but you just got to you got to build it. You got to shape it. Do you say you that? You go, out. there might be, there might be <laughs> yeah. an attractive woman well, <laughs> underneath all of that potential client. <laughs> there's got to be. Right? This is going to take time. Yeah. This is going to take it's five take years time. of my time. Yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's a balance. Though, yeah. making there's it. a balance. Uh, you'll look better in a few years, but to see what you want to see, it's a freaking process. And me and him talked about enjoying the process. Like we all want to get rich quick and we all want to lose weight fast, but it's like you don't understand that the, the beauty is in the journey, not where you end up because you're not going to appreciate it if i help you lose all this weight in like a few months you're going to get there you're still not satisfied you're still not going to like it you didn't do all the work to earn it like if you earn this body you look in the mirror you're like damn i built that but if you cheat your way there you're never going to appreciate it it's just like when you make money if you make your money it's harder to spend it because you freaking earned every fucking penny but when you're given this stack of money you're like you know, just giving it away, spending it. Well, I'm so. pretty good at spending so all gotta, the money I earn. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk to well, I mean, So, yeah, you got to enjoy the journey. You got to enjoy the ups yeah. and downs, the PRs. The really bad days make the really good days that much better. But we all want it so fast that you're missing the point. Like, you just got to yeah, enjoy it. We inject patience and, and all that. But on the other side, I mean, we've all seen way too many profound physical transformations happen to say that's not possible. Everybody can experience something that would make them overwhelmed with what they have achieved if they just be patient yeah if if you're patient like i'll have people come to me and like after four months they're like um i'm done training this isn't working for me and i'm like that is the stupidest thing you could ever do so you're telling me that if you stop you're going to get there faster than if you continue to do what you do so they're just not patient like you didn't gain all that weight in six months you're definitely not going to lose it in six months they're like oh but Susie lost all this weight you know i saw her picture on instagram or before and after and i'm like okay those are bullshit no one loses weight that fast and looks like that so, I mean, it's just this huge <laughs> misconception that it can happen because a lot of fitness people are putting that out there. I can get you lean in, in six months or a 60-day challenge, and I'm like, that's bullshit. You're not going to look Well, you'll like make progress in that amount of time. You'll but definitely make progress. But, yeah, the, you're probably not going to have your the, ideal body type that you have stuck in your mind. No, you know what's no. funny? People devote more patience to this, the current season of, like, fucking, you know, uh, yeah. whatever TV show they're watching. Yeah. They'll wait multiple weeks Eight weeks watch from January yeah. to the summertime to see what happens to yeah. the lead character and fucking you know whatever movie they're watching, yeah. but they will not do so to their own emotional, yeah. spiritual well being <laughs> yeah. and physical function. Yeah. They go, I can't wait to see what happens to X in this relationship. I'll just wait every fucking week yeah. from now until May thirtieth. 
but I won't like <laughs> learn what it takes to feel better one month from now. That's fucking too much time, man. Because it's work and it sucks and it's hard and working out can be like that, but you've got to enjoy, like you've got to enjoy the process again. Like you've got to set goals without those goals. You're just like, you're looking for this image that's not there. And so you're, you're repeatedly chasing this image you're never going to see. So if you set performance goals, you're going to find those a lot faster than you're going to find that image in your head. And again, it's just about earning that body you have always wanted. The chase the dragon. I, I, I like what you said earlier, talking about how long did it take you to get there. Like, yeah. that's one of the questions I like to ask people when they go, how long is it going to take to get rid of this? Yeah. I go, you know, how long ago was it that you had the body that you're, you'd are you like to get down to? Yeah. And they go, a lot of times they scratch their head and they'll say something like six S- years. Second yeah. grade I had the I mean, body I <laughs> 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 That's really yeah. weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was lean and I was under two hundred. <laughs> yeah, but like, <laughs> but it usually you know, someone will say six years, ten years. Yeah. It's never like, oh, I was there three months ago. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it, except for me, every once in a while. Yeah. Shit, I wish I had that body from three <laughs> months ago. And uh, we also talked about taking that month off from training and went vegan. <laughs> totally <laughs> screwed me up. We talked about <laughs> genetics too, right? Like I've always, my goal was always abs, and after like five years. Of doing everything, even at my leanest, I was like twelve percent. Did you try fat. crunches? I and, did and, not. Uh, holy try that. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> but I never saw my abs were never there, and I was like, okay, after five years, it's like I, there's got to be something else. I'm changing. Like, genetically, I know chicks have like bigger thighs and they got ripped six packs, and someone like me who I I couldn't put fat yeah, on why, my thighs. Why are your thighs to. bigger? I can't put fat on them even if I wanted to. I can't control where the fat goes. You know, I could build the muscle there, but. It just depends. Genetics. We can I get have some fat, fat down there. We'll figure it out. <laughs> just Science it. can help us. Inject it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I was surprised, I've actually gotten to know Jackie really well the last few days because we spent some time together. And it's surprising sometimes when you find somebody who does have like a really desirable physique and she was talking about having like emotional eating issues. Yeah. It's, like, it's like you don't, a lot of times you think, oh, it's just easy for that person. Yeah. You know, someone who looks good or has the type of body that you might want, you'd go, Oh, they probably don't have the same problems I have. And you were talking about like all the positive, not just negative emotional eating issues, but like when something good happens, you know, the the celebration. Yeah. Food is social and it's everywhere and it's acceptable and it's the worst drug because the cleaner you try to eat, the more people around you get pissed. Oh, you're so annoying. You're on a diet. You can't eat anything. You're like, I'm just fucking trying to do my best, you know? So, I mean, I've got horrible problems with food. I'm 100% addicted to food. I tell my clients this when they meet me, they're like, I'm like, I, I binge. I mean, I, I eat till I hate myself and then I get depressed and I eat more because it's the only thing that I could do to make myself feel better. I mean, it's really like a sick cycle. You like, eat because you're unhappy. You're unhappy because, because you, you eat. Because you eat. So like, and seriously, and like I get in this like this weird like depressed cycle where like I, I eat, would have like, never shit, known what that like, was if it weren't for Austin Powers. I'll tell you. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but it's, it's a serious problem. And a lot of clients that I have, I tell them and they're just like, oh my God, that's me too. How do you fix it? And I'm like, the goal has to be bigger than that desire to eat, you know, and you've got to get away from those situations and you can't have food in the house. If it's in the house, I'm going to get to it. Like I almost tell Liz, you have to lock the cabinets or get like a code. Cause if I'm there by myself, like I'll just start eating chips and I know I should not be eating lock chips the cabinets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the morning. There's Jackie locks on everything. <laughs> First thing I do, I'll grab chips and I'll start eating as I'm making a paleo perfect little breakfast. I'm eating chips and I'm purposely cutting carbs out of my meal because I don't like carbs in the morning, but I'm eating chips nonstop. And it's just like, why what? do you have it in the house? What in the do first you do? Place? Cause she has a son. And so here's the thing. If she buys oh. a little, if she buys a little packages of chips, I won't do it. Cause I know how many calories are in there and I just won't go for it. But if it's an open big bag, humans are so strange. All so, of the games we have to play with yeah, ourselves. It's really weird. Just to if, keep our hands <laughs> off the shit. We know we shouldn't be eating. <laughs> if it's a big bag that's open, it's like, just it's this and that. If, you are, if you think about it, then I can totally not do it. If this is the size, but that's, <laughs> size i totally shouldn't i feel it bad just, it makes no sense like if i know the <laughs> calories i'm like no but if i don't i'm like fuck i'll have two you know it's like but it makes no sense <laughs> and by the way for everybody two who's, turns into a hundred yeah, yeah doug has an achilles hill yeah and here's the thing which you, is sir. skittles if skittles <laughs> are in the house mm-hmm. they won't they won't last them that's how i'm with chips yeah. It's Anything. tough, though, because I have the same problem as this, because I have kids at home, uh-huh. and I know people are like, well, just don't bring chips in your house. Your kids shouldn't be like, shut the fuck yeah. up. You don't know any, <laughs> yeah. you have no idea what you're talking about yeah. when you're talking about what kids should be eating. Yeah. Once you get one, you're like, oh, I need some chips. This kid will not shut <laughs> up. Tell you what, my kids won't eat anything that they don't kill, all right? This is oh, what you I'm say saying. now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. One, you enter, like, can I get a fucking kid's designed protein bar? That's the only thing this kid will eat. They won't eat. My kid won't eat. Meat, he won't eat. Some vegetables, he won't eat macaroni and cheese or some <laughs> chips because the texture throws them off. He has to have certain kinds of foods and certain kinds of other things. Uh, and it's tough. It makes it a struggle. T-Rex. The first step is just understanding that, look, I know that food is a powerful thing in my life. 
I know that I'm human, that a lot of my things, positive and negative emotions, are going to revolve around foods and what comforts me and yeah. what makes me feel certain ways when certain things happen in my life. If you know, that's your first step towards figuring yeah. out how to just navigate your way through those Well, people challenges. are like, how do you break that cycle? And sometimes I'm so deep in that cycle that I'm like, I can't even tell you because I, I restart every Monday. You know, this Monday I'm going to start over and then I fuck up on Monday. So I'm like, next Monday I'm going to start over. And I go through these phases where it's like week after week till finally. It's like if I can get three to five good days, like going, good food days, I'm fucking back on. Like, And when I'm on, you can't break me. But when I'm off, I'll eat anything and everything. And I just won't give a fuck. And it just keeps going. So and what gets you off? Off my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Question of the day. <laughs> we need details. <laughs> No, um, like it's just like if you go to a party and everyone's like, come on, have some cake, you know, and then you have a little bite and then that fucking drug sugar is just like, oh, that was so good. And then you have more cake and then you're like, okay, the next morning you wake up and you like shit again. Mm. Or like I'll go out to you with dinner with people and um, I'm like, like don't let me, I'm like, don't let me eat any bread for <laughs> a day, like two loaves. I'm like, don't let me eat any bread. <laughs> and they're like, you're so annoying. That makes everyone feel comfortable to eat some bread and I'll eat all the fucking bread. And they're like, well, you didn't have to eat all the bread. I'm like, it's either fucking all of it or nothing. Like, just, <laughs> That's leave, funny. just leave me alone. Oh, if I on, say Jackie. I don't want bread, just leave me alone. That makes, that makes us all feel uncomfortable. Uh, our decisions hate, to eat whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, exactly. you know, irregardless of the consequences. Really, Come on, don't you be make, so lame. You make oh, you just said like irregardless. <laughs> Andy, get him. Andy regardless. Andy, get him. <laughs> regardless of the consequences. Shut up, Andy. <laughs> so a few minutes ago, you said that you couldn't put fat on your legs if you want to, and then you you went back and clarified and said that you put it all on on yeah, your stomach. But, I mean, but we kind of laughed over that part, and so a lot of yeah. people might not have heard have heard you say that part. Yeah, I totally yeah. So not that, that you yeah. don't put fat on at all. No, no, Whoa. just it goes straight. Stop touching your microphone. So yeah, not that you don't put fat <laughs> no, on at all. Just, you just put it on your stomach. I put your hands it goes in your to pockets. my love handles or right here. And some girls gain it on their thighs and they'll have six packs faster than I will. But mm -hmm. someone like me is just goes straight here in the back of my arm. And that's just genetics. Yeah. And so when someone's like, I want six pack and I see they've got my body type and I'm like, I don't want to say you're never going to get it, but fuck if you only knew what it's going to take to get there. Like you're asking for a lot because you can't change genetics. So you could never it get that like, shredded six pack. Yeah, I will you, never you, you, have you that get, You can get flat, but yeah. like the little sections, the six sections that. don't no. really show up on you. There's girls that have like thighs and they have these ridiculous six packs and their body fat, they have way more body fat than I do, but it's just where your body's going to put just it. Just carrying it in different yeah, places. Yeah, you carry it in different places. Yeah. Okay, if you can understand and accept it, you're going to be that much... Then you're closer not, to your goals. Well, yeah, because then they're not chasing this untouchable goal. It's like if, I mean, if I would still be looking for a six-pack six years later, even when I was at 12% body fat, my lowest, I'm like, it's just my body yeah, type. Beating yourself fine. up only reduces your chances yeah. of being happy and I mean, and someone will be like, oh, we have a six-pack in this picture. I'm like, yeah, put a barbell on my back. I have a six-pack. You know, let me hang on the rings. I might have lines, but that's because you're just stretching everything. It's not because it's there. So. All right, let's take a break real quick. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the haters and all them trolls. <laughs> We already All right, welcome back to Technique Quad. Today we're talking about rowing. Okay, so I like rowing for a couple of reasons. Um, a few of the basics. It's a super conservative way to train. Uh, you know, if you're a brand new to training and you want to be able to just do some monostructural cardio, you know, you could go for a run or something like that. You could do some air dine, you could row. Uh, air dining, rowing, those are probably uh, much more conservative than even just going for a jog. You know, you're less likely to trip and fall, sprain your ankle, get knee pain after a couple of weeks, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, get hit by a car. Get hit by a car. Uh, so it's a nice uh, conservative way to get started if you are brand new to training and especially if you have a, you know, lower body joint pain. And, uh, number two, especially for advanced athletes, I like it because it doesn't have a lot of stability demands and it's not exactly self-limiting. Uh, self-limiting would be things like, like double unders. You get tired on double unders and then you start missing and then you have to take a break because you missed. Well, on rowing, there's no real opportunity to, to miss. You could take a break whenever you wanted to, but you can kind of just keep grinding it out even if your intensity keeps going down um, just because you're not going to fall off of it. And if you quit, you, then you have to mentally actually stop moving. You're not going to miss uh, like you do on double unders and have to like take a break break. So, uh, so I like it for that reason because because it has no stabil stability demands, excuse me, and it's self not self-limiting, you can really dig yourself into a very deep metabolic hole where you're breathing really heavy, your heart rate is up um, you know, really, really high, and you can do some very hard intervals, and that's, that's great training for uh, you know, your, your cardiovascular system, but it's not gonna make you very sore at the same time because all the movements are concentric only, which basically means that you pull, and then on the way down, there's no resistance. So there's no resistance for your arms, and there's no resistance for your legs um, as you um, cycle back and recover from your pull. 
and then since there's no eccentric to the movement and there's no resistance on the way back from your pole on the recovery portion, it's not going to make you very sore. So you can do a lot of hard intervals and not really get very sore in the process, uh, at least if you're in moderately good shape. If you're brand spanking new, you've never done anything, then maybe you get sore like the first time. But it's not going to make you very sore, so you can do it a lot and you can do a recovery row and it's not going to beat up your muscles um, or your joints that much. It's a very conservative way to train. So I like it for that reason. Uh, basics on technique. Uh, first thing, and actually since these are totally out of place for me, I'll show you that too. Um, as far as the as far as the straps go, you want to put them basically right over where your toes meet your feet. So for me, that's about that's about right there. That might even be might even be a little bit much for me. Yeah, about right there. That way. If my heel does come off the ground, this goes right over where my, where my toes meet my foot, and so it can stay down. It's not pulling on my actual foot. All right, so first, basically all good weightlifting technique or any movement technique basically centers around having good posture. So especially when you're sitting, which is where people tend to think about good posture, you want to be right about here. Okay? My heels are, for the most part, down. My knee is bent about 90 degrees. I'm sitting up nice and tall. My arms are straight, and then basics. I'm going to drive through my heels until my legs get straight, then I'm going to pull with my arms, and then the exact opposite. My arms go forward, and then my knees kind of stick back through my arms. Okay, So it's always sitting nice and tall. I'm always legs, arms, arms, legs, driving through my heels. Legs, arms, arms, legs. So that's the basics. Uh, a few things that people do wrong, uh, starting with my feet. A lot of people, they'll come too far forward. Instead of getting to about right here or so, they'll come more, they'll come forward and they'll bring their heels up and they'll kind of bounce the seat off of their heels like this. And they'll even, they'll even reach forward like that and then they'll give it like this big long pull. Okay, like really, oh, <laughs> really extreme like this. Okay, you don't need your pull to be quite that long. Sure, you, you definitely want as long of a pull as you can with good technique, uh, but you don't need to max out your range of motion by uh, going into bad technique. It'd be like, it'd be like rounding your back on squatting and, and picking your heels up off the ground just to make the bar move further even though you're doing the whole thing completely wrong. So you don't want to do, do that on rowing either. You do, want to, you do want to go forward with straight arms just right until your heels start to come up. They don't need to come up like that, but just my heels are down here. They're going to come up a tiny bit and I can lean forward and then I get right here, my heels are down now, I can drive through my heels until my legs are straight and then I can pull with my arms. All right, point number two, a lot of people bend their elbows too early. So if I'm here and I'm driving, I don't want to bend my arms before my knees are straight. I always want to have my legs go straight and then my arms finish the pull. I never want to get here and then pull with my arms before my legs are straight. That'd be like doing a deadlift where you're bending your elbows before your knees are you know, basically straight. You shouldn't bend your elbows at all on a deadlift. You should keep your arms all the way locked out straight. That way you can use the, the strength from your legs and the rest of your body and your arms don't become your limiter. If you bend your elbows, well now the strength that I have to keep my elbow bent becomes my limiter as opposed to my, my straight arm and my legs becoming my limiter. Okay? So I'm always stronger with straight arms, so I want to use all, everything I can from my legs and my back and then finish with my arms, go back to straight, and then I can come back forward. Okay? Uh, so that's point number two. You always want to have straight arms as long as possible, just like you would on a deadlift and just like you would on a snatch or a clean and jerk. Point number three, I want to sit up nice and tall. So if I'm here, I never want to be sl like slouched or slumped over. I never want to be here. I see a lot of people, they shrug and, and they kind of pull. They usually don't even make it all the way to their chest. Not that you need to bang it into your chest, but you need, at least need to get semi-close. So I don't want to be slumped over. I want to sit up nice and tall, good posture. So I'm here and not rounded. If I round over, you know, I'm, I'm going to get more back problems. It's going to hurt my low back especially. I'm going to get more shoulder problems because I'm going to destabilize and roll forward like this. And then when I pull, it's hard for me to pull my shoulder blades together if I'm all rounded over. So I want to sit up nice and tall. That way when I go to pull, my shoulder blades can move back. Okay, my shoulder blades need to come back and then my elbows come back and my elbows stay in 
I don't want to come with my shoulders forward and my elbows out like this with a round back. I want to be nice and tall, nice and tall, shoulders back, elbows down and, and sucked in. And then I can come forward and come out like that. So that goes for any time you do any type of rowing, whether it's on a rower, whether you're doing any type of horizontal pulling, which a lot of people call rows, whether you're doing like a bent over barbell row or a ring row, I'm going to pull here and I never want to be slumped over pulling like this, okay? That's bad technique, no matter what you're pulling on, the rower included, okay? So I want to have nice, tall posture at all times. One more quick point about sitting up nice and tall. When I'm sitting up nice and tall with a, with a straight neutral spine, which, you know, that's, that's a good term for rowing as well, even though you mostly hear it with respect to, you know, deadlift squats um, and Olympic weightlifting, snatches, cleans, and whatnot. I want to have a nice, tall, neutral spine here, and then I still always want to pivot at my hip I don't want to flex and extend at my back. That's a universal movement uh, law, if you will. Okay? So when I come forward, I want to, if I'm here, as I come forward and I, I want to reach a little bit, I don't want to round to get more range of motion. Okay? A lot of people, they'll round here and then they'll pull and they'll sit up straight when they get back here and then they'll come forward and they'll try to get a little more range of motion and they'll destabilize and they'll round. Okay? I want to keep good posture when I'm forward, come forward at my hip, maybe I get a tiny bit of flexion, but it's, it's minor uh, with my spine. So I'm here, then I'm driving, and when I get to here, again, same thing, I'm just going to pivot at my hip a little bit, okay? My spine stays neutral, and I'm pivoting at the hip, okay? So I'm here, I lean forward, pivot and pull, arms, my knees come through the window, just like that. I never pull here and then move my knees and then move the handle around my knees, okay? I drive with my knees, I pull with my arms, arms go forward, knees come through the window, I pivot at the hip and then I drive again, right to here, forward, knees come through the window again, okay? Never like this, okay? And that's, let's see if I can do it like, that's probably more realistic of what you'll see They'll kind of go like this, okay? You want to go forward and then here. All right, so I'm going to talk about my own, my own bad habit here, and you've probably already seen me do it. Uh, when I pull, the, the chain comes straight out, and then when I go back, I want it to go straight in, okay? Straight out and straight in. What I don't want to do, and this is a minor thing, but it's a bad habit that I have, and I see a lot of people do it, is they come out, and then they track along, almost, almost like they're actually rowing a boat. So it's not necessarily like the worst thing in the world. It's a minor point, but it's a little detail that uh, might help you get a little bit of a better time on you know, your 500 or your, 2K, or your 2K row, excuse me. All right, next point is especially relevant if you're doing uh, a very short race, if you're doing like a, a 300 meter row for time or a 500 row for time, especially if you're a big, strong, powerful person. You don't want to pull hard. So I get a few rows in here. If you start pulling hard, and they start coming forward real fast, you see people going like this. And then if you see, if you actually watch down there, you'll see it move a little bit. Okay. The rower should never jump around. Okay. If it's moving on the ground, then you're using your energy to actually move the rower not to pull the handle to move the, to move the flywheel to make your meters keep counting, okay? You're wasting energy. So what you want to do instead is you're always here, you pull, you pull hard, and then you relax. You pull hard, relax. Pull hard, relax. So if you're doing, you know, if you're doing a 500 meter row, your your strokes per minute is probably going to be in the 20s. You know, it might be 25 or 27. You shouldn't be pulling so many reps. If you're pulling hard and then you're coming forward as fast as you can, then your stroke rate is going to be too fast. You might be able to lower your stroke rate by keeping your, uh, your time, your speed, the exact same, which will, which will, over time, help you save energy. All right, now that I've recovered. All right, as far as your grip goes, 
Um, these handles are, they're not sticky, but they have a lot of friction. They're pretty grippy, so you don't have to grab onto these really hard. It's not like a barbell that's gonna roll out of your hand. It's not going anywhere, so you can be pretty loose and relaxed with your grip. You want your thumbs around it, but you don't need to squeeze at all. In fact, I could probably just be like this, and I could still probably row pretty well, even just with my, my fingers barely hooked over it and my thumbs kind of just hanging there. You don't want to do that, but that shows that you, know, you don't have to squeeze really hard to get a good grip on here. So just wrap your thumbs around and then nice and super loose here. Uh, that way you're, especially if you're rowing a, a longer race, that way your forearms don't fatigue and that doesn't become an issue for you at all, especially if you're running or rowing rather, you know, a 5K, 6K, 10K. Now that's a long time to be gripping something constantly. So you don't want to be squeezing barely at all. Just let your hands hang nice and loose. Let your fingers do most of the work. Your thumbs will be wrapped around it, but really your thumbs aren't going to be doing a whole lot. And you can just be just hanging on the ends of your fingers. All right, one more thing is uh, where the handle is going to hit on your body. You want to pull it straight back into you. And usually for most people, that's going to hit right at the bottom of their sternum or right at the top of their abs. Kind of the, the first two of your shredded six pack, it's going to hit right there. Okay? So what you don't want to do is pull super low where you're hitting yourself down by the belly button. And you also don't want to pull way up towards your neck like this just to get a longer pull. I see people doing that sometimes. They'll lean way back and they'll pull like this and they'll try to get like the longest pull they can. Uh, which only lasts for so long, you're going you're gonna to get tired really quick like that. So you want to pull, again, straight back into you, which usually if the, if the chain is totally parallel to the ground and it's not going down and it's not going up, then it's probably going to hit you right about um, right below your sternum, and that's the perfect spot for it to hit. That being said, you don't need to like slam it into you every time. It's just going to come, may maybe gently touch. You know, maybe just get like right up to it, but you shouldn't have a bruise on, on your chest after you get done rowing. Okay, we get this question a lot too. Uh, what damper setting should you put it on? There's this, there's this uh, one to 10 scale on the side of the wheel here. So uh, which setting is gonna be the best for you? Um, this isn't resistance, so it doesn't mean that 10 is the most resistance necessarily and one is the least resistance necessarily, although uh, there will be a change in resistance and 10 does tend to be a little harder, but that's not really what it exactly is for. Uh, the damper lets more air in if it's up on 10 and less air in if it's down on one. So uh, even though it's more resistance up at the 10, if you're a big, strong person, a very powerful person, you know, if you're a guy that, that back squats, you know, four or 500 pounds and you're, you're six foot two and you're just a bigger, stronger, more powerful person and you happen to be in really good shape where you can, where you can maintain that power output for a long period of time, then maybe you want to go with a higher number. The shorter the race, the more powerful you're going to be pulling, the higher the number, um, a higher number will help your meters accumulate faster. Okay? If you're going to be doing a much longer workout and or you just happen not to be as big and as strong as some other athletes, you know, if you're a 125-pound female and you back squat 200 pounds as opposed to the 6'2", um, you know, 400, 500 pound squatter that I just mentioned, then it might be better for you to maybe be down maybe on like a four or five, you know, for a 500 or, you know, a 1K or maybe even, maybe even a little bit lower if you're going longer than that. So uh, overgeneralize, you know, if you're big and strong, you can go higher. If you are not quite as big and strong, then you can go lower. That's the easiest way to think about it. There are tests available to find out your perfect damper setting. Uh, we're not gonna talk about those right now, but you can use the Googles and find those. All right, that's it for the row series. If you want to see the rest of our technique wide videos, you can go to barbellshrugged.com. Click on the episodes tab at the top of the page. You get a little pop down menu, click on technique wads. All the videos are in the library. I'll see you another day.
And we're back with Jackie Perez. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually, you got started in fitness. I mean, you played, what, volleyball in volleyball, high school? Volleyball, soccer, softball, anything I can do. Did a lot of those sports. You even did the corporate gym thing, personal did training, 24-hour pers- fitness. Yeah, I did the corporate gym thing. So you learned how to train the muscles there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I did. How, I mean, you enjoyed that job, right? I right, did. Yeah. I did. I loved it. I just loved all my clients and, I mean, the corporateness, not as much, but I definitely loved <laughs> Everyone that came my way. It's a everyone way I met. Of putting it. Yeah. And you still do a lot of that. You still do a lot of personal training, even lot, today, right? I do a lot of personal training. I do some CrossFit coaching, but I mainly just uh, personal training. A lot of women. Um, right. I don't Mostly do a lot women. Of, I don't do a lot of men unless like it's referred or someone's husband. Or it always gets funny. That's what, mm-hmm. that's what we love about Jackie, man. You fucking work. You put your money where your mouth is. Like a mm-hmm. so You you are in the gym frequently engaging. Coaching, yeah. grinding away yeah. with people, you you have you have your ear to the ground yeah. on these issues. Yeah. Oh, you left uh, Twenty Four Hour Fitness like four or five years ago, Something like that. and then you went to yeah. a cro- help build a CrossFit gym CrossFit from gym. the ground, mm-hmm. ground up to where it is now, yeah. and from what I understand, it's really successful. Yeah, you guys have a lot of clients, yeah. and yeah, it's huge, yeah, ton of members. Yeah. So you were saying most of your clients are women, and are they are most of them performance athletes? They 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 train CrossFit because they want to compete in the open, go to the um, games, so they just kind of general. General fitness people that just want to look better. It's just a lot of general. It's just a lot of women that just want to look good. They just want to lean out, and they are just so tired of trying everything else that's not working. And they're like, I heard this is intense. You know, I'm here. So, Mm. I mean, it's definitely mainly women, and and we all have one common goal. We want to look good. I'm not saying we don't want to perform well, but we are there for that reason. And, like, in my gym, people used to be like, oh, we're not here to look good. We're not here to do this. We're here to be the best version of you or we're here to be um, all, an athlete, all that. And I'm like, I am here because I want to look good. Like, I, yeah. I'm not going to lie. There's a reason I started training the way I did. I don't know I anyone who started good. training for pr- any other reason. Well, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. But for a while, if people make me feel like shit because I'd be like, no, I just want to look at If I want to do vanity abs when I'm done and do some sit-ups, what do you care? I know they say CrossFit works your abs and all that and the overhead squat, but I want to do abs because I want abs, you know, like I want to look good. Yeah. So, but some people always make me feel like that's not a good thing to train for that. And I'm like, what else do you think I'm training for? It's a bit, yeah, of, a, I, it's a bit of a false choice. Well, you can have both. They're yeah, both linked, intimately of linked. Of course, but it's kind of not cool to be like, that's not what you should be training. I could train for whatever the hell I want to train. And if women come to me, they all say, I just want to look good. Just help me get there. And, of course, I use a bunch of different movements that they don't need to look good to make them look good because the whole I just want them to be well-rounded. And I want them, if they want to compete one day, be able to compete. But definitely that's why they're there. Yeah, hey, If all you do is bench press, do curls, and do crunches, and you go home, and that's your workout three days a week, and that's all you do, that's bad. But if you do a balanced, well-thought-out program, yes. and then you do a couple curls and you do a couple crunches just because yes. you kind of want to do those yes. things, yeah. no big deal. They, they, okay. they are still muscles. Yeah. You can still work them. Yeah. They still have some value. But if it's all you're doing, that's a bad thing. Yeah. But yeah. that's that's not what you're doing. No. You're, you're just throwing it on top of a, a more well-thought-out program. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's why I like Barbell Bikini because women come up to me and they're like, Jackie, program for me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not a programmer. I'm like, I'm just going to tell you to go take classes. They're like, yeah, but they're making me do all these really high skill things. And that's, you know, it's taking up most of the time. And right. that's not what I'm, I'm here for. And I'm like, I understand. And so people come to me and I'll modify the workouts to make it work for them. Some people just want a sexy 30 minute workout sometimes, you know, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But people make you think it's got to be short and fast and it's got to be high skill. And it's like, this program should be what you want it to be, not what I want it to be for you. You're right. the you're the client. Like I'm not gonna force my goals on you. Like so that's where it gets kinda sticky. But like I now have a way to refer people and be like, you should be doing all these different movements. I like snatch and clean and jerk because you work every single muscle at the same time. So your body is growing all together. You're not just benching, you're not just curling, you're not isolating your muscles. Mm-hmm. The more muscles you move, the more calories you burn. I'm like, I have limited time. I want to do as much as I can. Yeah. So here's a program that's got everything for you. And it's not leaving out any movement, but it's just doing it in a way where you're you're focusing on leaning out and building muscle and not necessarily being the strongest or the biggest back squatter. I've never had the intention of being the best squatter, the best deadlift. I just wanted to be okay at everything. And the reason I could do well in a competition right now is because there's not one thing I can't do. I'm not the best at anything and I'll never win first place in any event, any competition, Mm -hmm. but I'm well-rounded. There's nothing that I cannot do. And that's my focus for the people that I train. I'm like, I just want you to be able to do everything and build your body all together as you're doing it. Yeah, like what you said about, you know, four or five years ago, everyone came to you and they were like, no, it's all about performance. And they like, they were almost like, like 
pissing on yeah, like aesthetics like, like, like they were I making fun of the bodybuilders be. and yeah. anyone that wanted to look good they were like they were like rag on those people yeah. like they didn't actually want to look good underneath it all yeah. but, but it just was so it wasn't shit. cool back then it no. was like it was like crossfit was new on the scene it was all about performance and all about functional movement yes. and like and like the enemy was people that wanted to look good even yeah. though everybody wants even to look that good is the goal like if yeah. i'm doing something that's making my body look away i don't want it to look i'm gonna stop because my goal is not to be the best at that thing my goal is just to be the best version of me that I could possibly build on my frame. Yeah. So, I mean, if there's sort of like if I'm doing one movement, like let's say I'm benching all the time, my tries mm-hmm. are getting huge, my chest is getting huge, and that's not what I want. Like, why would I continue to do that? No, I'm gonna mm-hmm. do, I'm gonna work more legs, back squats, because that's the muscles that I want to build. I want to shape my body. Yeah, I do feel like that's going away in a big way, though. Yeah, totally. Like aesthetics is really coming into to this kind of world yeah. right now. It doesn't mean people don't want to train for performance or yeah. eat for performance or both. perform, yeah. but yeah, they want to perform yeah. and they want to look good. And yeah. it's becoming cool now to just to just be real and be authentic and just admit that that's that's who you are and that's how you are and it's totally okay. And now now when I say that to people, I go, oh, I just I just want to kind of lean up just so I can just look yeah. a little bit better. Or I want to put on some muscle mass because I just feel like I want to just look a little bit better. Everyone's yeah. like. Yeah, you know, I, me too. I, and people are starting to just admit yeah. it without being like, oh, I thought you were like a purist and you want to just snatch yeah. more weight. I do, yeah. but I can look good in the process. Yeah, exactly. Why not? Try, why not? Yeah. yeah, you can use functional fitness to uh, get lean and sexy. Yeah, you can. That's I don't fine. think there's it's any it's other better way. It's, it's, it's the, the most, most fun way to do it. It's the most yeah. fun way to do it. Because I've done the non-fun way. Yeah. That shit sucks. Yeah. Well, there's so many yeah. exercises. I look good that way too, though. I'm just saying. You're just doing <laughs> hamstring curls on a machine and then you're going up to the leg extension machine you're doing three sets of 10 three sets of 12 and then you're going to the fucking tricep machine that shit's boring <laughs> yeah it's not that fun no, no not, not compared, no not goal, compared like, to doing snatches yeah. and cleans and back squats and jerks and yeah. shit that's just way that's fun why you gotta yell at each other yeah <laughs> and you gotta have mirrors <laughs> yeah. well there's just so many exercises that i feel like because it's not crossfit you shouldn't be doing it like a one leg deadlift i think that's awesome for people but like the cool thing is now that we have power lifting we see the we see the benefit of doing one big lift and then doing assistant lifts to that lift. That's awesome. They do that it for makes, a reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. They it's get better activation. Does that work? Yeah, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Only the strongest people but, in the world do it. I mean, I just feel like there should be a mix of CrossFit with a little bit of that. There are mm-hmm. exercises that do have room that will make you better. I mean, a lot of chicks, like I was saying the other day, their knees cave in. So one mm-hmm. leg deadlift is kind of nice for them to to learn to fix that. And so I put that in my personal clients. Like I don't I don't teach them like at the class. I'll do a skill and then I'll go through like corrective exercises exercise around like oh you need this and then they'll do like a little wad but the wad is relevant like it's Mm. not kipping pull-ups because that's not that's more of a performance goal right that's not just like i want to build your back so i think we're going to do some strict pull-ups you know if you're competing yeah get on that kipping pull-up if you're just trying to be stronger in those muscles then do a strict pull-up you know there's a difference a lot of people take new clients and they'll just have them do thrusters and kipping pull-ups because they just don't know what else to yeah. do. That's all they've been exposed to. Yeah. They don't actually know how to assess somebody and figure out what their weaknesses are, yeah. figure, figure out what they're good at, and figure out what they need, yeah. and then write a workout that's going to fix those weaknesses and actually move that person forward faster because they actually shored up weaknesses, and now they're strong where yeah. they formerly exactly. were weak. Exactly. So you're just building from the bottom, from the beginning uh, up. You know, Instead of just skipping all these steps and going to all these big movements, you're actually breaking it down and doing step ups and doing you know things that are going to build that one squat later on but not right now just bang those squats out add more weight add more weight add more weight there should be something health and fitness is the only place where it's okay to jump grades and levels (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) i just want to graduate now (laughs) i don't want to learn abcs fuck that it's boring (laughs) no one ever thinks that until it comes to changing the body i've been fat 10 years make me a they want to fucking, uh, I dream a genie their way out of being fat. Like, bang. Yeah, yeah. No, I, unfortunately. I, I ate paleo yeah. today. Fuck it. I should be thin now. <laughs> it sounds so irrational, but yeah. that's exactly how people feel yeah. about it. And it affects how their programming yeah, and their I mean, planning and their patience turns out in the gym. True. Yeah, there was a person that, and I actually forget who, who said this quote originally. I feel really bad that I forgot because I used to know it. But uh, they used to say the, the expression, you want to work movements, not muscles. And that was really big in the strength conditioning world, especially like 10 or 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And that did a lot of good because it, it took people out of just working their muscles yeah. on, on machines and doing like Nautilus circuits like, like you know, 30 years yeah. ago bodybuilding was yeah. uh, in a lot of ways. So it did a lot of good and it brought functional fitness more into the strength and conditioning world for, you know, college sports teams and NFL and, and professional sports and for anyone that wanted to just get bigger, stronger and faster and more athletic. So it did do a lot of good, but then it kind of went too far yeah. uh, in the short term. And then uh, they, they 
I don't know if I'm screwing that expression up too. They they did it. They overdid it for excuse me, and then that, now they're underdoing it. Yeah, where the pendulum swings too far the other direction. Yeah, it, it swung too far, and so they only did movements, and then they didn't work any muscles. And yeah. now it's they're like, well, okay, we see there's some value in that too. Whether yeah. it's corrective exercise or you're just showing up weaknesses, like I said, however you want to phrase it. And so now it's coming back in where you work your movements first. You can do your snatch, clean, jerk, and your front squats, and then it's like, okay, well now if I need to go do some glute ham raises and just make my hamstrings a little yeah. bit stronger, I, I can go do a knee joint only movement which yeah. is an isolation exercise more or less for your hamstrings even though you're stabilizing across the hip to make my hamstrings stronger to supplement but the yeah it's an accessory movement you're yeah. supplementing your other the other part of your yeah. your program which the other part is 90 percent of it this is just 10 percent of it but now people are realizing that there's some value in that and it's really coming into yeah. uh, to this world to this world very very strong yeah. right now yeah. and, that, and that's a good thing yeah, i can't, I can't think thing. of one muscular uh, athletically fit performer person who uses any kind of implement or anything who in their training doesn't follow that approach it's like it's what you have to do to get there it's like no one chooses it they've tried other things it always comes back to big quality of motion high skill component movements yeah. with heavy loads and high yeah. amounts of force and power yeah. and then things to help you get better at that that yeah. that alone won't address well you know? progressing you know just yeah. starting at the right place and progressing movements like me and um god what's that guy that was just on here before me Goldick? Yeah. So he was like, he's like, I took a little bit of time off. He's like, now I feel like I need to, um, I need to take a few steps back and rebuild. And I was like, I was just telling someone that too. Like you get so far and mm -hmm. you get to a point where like, I feel like shit, my back hurts. All you're doing is loading, loading, loading. It's like, it's time to go back and rebuild those things that you weren't probably doing right, as you, but you could get away with them. So you kept doing them. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the same place. I'm like, lower back's constantly sore and annoyed. Mm -hmm. There's obviously something going on that I need to fix before I keep loading. Because if I just keep loading, I'm going to end up screwing up my back. Like mm -hmm. the people say CrossFit won't get you injured. Anything can get you injured if you don't do it right. Of course, CrossFit can get you injured if you do something stupid and you just keep loading and loading and loading the same lift. Yeah, CrossFit won't get you injured if yeah. you do everything in an idealized manner. Yeah. You know what I mean? You do the exact volume you need, do every yeah. single movement perfectly. You never overdo it. You eat perfectly. Yeah. That's that. That's ideal yeah, because ideal. it's it, and unrealistic for yeah. most people because most people don't know everything about every aspect yeah. of it. Most people, but are people. if you do do it well, <laughs> then you probably won't get hurt. It's only when you do something incorrectly or you overdo something yeah. that you end up hurting you yourself. Don't listen so. to your body. I, you're, I'm fine. I got it. I can do more. Whatever. Also, find people yeah. who. You know, are huge proponents of movements only. They're not real big on assistance work. Have a background in like bodybuilding training. Yeah, yeah. like it's like it's like. Well, you know, I, I mean, that's probably what saved me for a while. Like I had like nine years of like lots of isolation, making sure everything was symmetrical yeah. and all that. Yeah. And yeah. and then like I got away for like five for like five years to get away with like just training movement. I didn't have to do assistance work because I had all, that huge, you know, history. Yeah. Um, uh, and volume of assistance work. Yeah. And then yeah. it got, then it kind of caught up with me. I was like, oh mm. shit! But you see that, you see these guys are like, you know, really jacked, and they're like, oh yeah, just movements. Like, what'd you do before CrossFit? And they're like, well, you know, I was Globo Gym. Yeah. And it's like, well, okay, yeah. yeah. I think All it's right. super so like, we we have to take into consideration your entire life here when yeah. we talk about why you're trained the way you are. It right is now. super improper to throw the baby out with the bathwater and to say that what has made people big and strong and jacked for a long a hundred years and somehow we'll just throw all that shit out the things that bodybuilders have been sort of suffering suffering is a good yeah. word the, I, you cannot say unkind words you can say it's not for you yeah. that, not putting a banana hammock on and painting myself <laughs> bronze and getting on stage is not my thing yeah. dude that's fine yeah. but don't call it anything other it's, it's super hard work and dedication yeah. it's taking a long time for those that crew that community that <laughs> population to figure out what it takes to make people big and strong and they keep doing it because it keeps working. Yeah. You'd be a fool to learn from it and absorb yeah. what is useful. Of course, yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with any category <laughs> of fitness as long as you. Formula. It's like <laughs> yeah, it depends on who you are and what you want. As long as you're doing something where you know what it is, you know why you're doing it, and you know realistically what that type of fitness program is going to do for you, then there's nothing wrong with choosing any aspect of fitness. Just like choosing any sport, there's nothing wrong yeah. wrong with being a basketball player versus a football player. They are totally different sports, yeah. and they're they're going to be totally different. Uh -huh. They're going to respond. <laughs> you're going to respond totally different <laughs> to those sports. But as long as you know why you're doing it and it's what you actually want to do, then that's totally fine. Like, there's a plan. I know where I'm going. It's being explained to me. I have support. It makes sense. These things sound like what you're looking for, not like any particular program or sets and reps. Like yeah. these are the big principles that if you have those, other things will just work out. You know. Yeah. Where, where people fall short is that they they see they'll read an article like in Shape Magazine. And they'll say like yoga is really good for core strength, and then you're like, okay, well. If you have no background in core strength, well, yoga will help with that. that. That's very true. But what's your goal? Well, if they're trying to be an Olympic gymnast, 
Well, yoga's not going to give you the core strength of being an Olympic gymnast. Like, yeah. it's not probably the best thing in the world for core strength. If you did gymnastics, you would be stronger than the yoga people, and that's that's pretty much a fact, yeah. right? Yeah. But it will help some people. It just depends on what level you're trying it to get to. Depends on the level where you start. Yeah. I'm at, I'm says, at, it says at, yoga I'm makes you strong, and then you talk about world class powerlifters, and no one's going to get to world class powerlifting well the level by doing yoga for that one thing. I'm sure somebody would argue with you over this. I, stuff. I, I, yeah. Someone probably will. I, 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 somebody I, I, I would I say yoga. that's bullshit, Doug Larson. I do yoga for core work. <laughs> it's hard, <laughs> and, and, and there's some value in it. I'm, not, see, see, I'm definitely not saying that not to because I like yoga too. But it just it just depends if you know why you're doing it and if it's actually going to get you to where you want to be or not. That's the whole question with all these yeah. areas. Yoga's well, hard like, and beautiful yeah. and tough. I want to be a better lifter, so getting more flexibility is going to help me. So I'll do yoga for flexibility and core because it's helping me with this goal. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's not right. not doing it just yeah, to right, do yoga. Right now I'm actually doing yoga for flexibility, yeah. but I actually do gymnastics for more core work. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, and then what I find sometimes is I'm like, I'm doing some yoga stuff that's very core oriented. I'm like, Eh, I'm gonna pull it back on this pose real quick because I'm gonna hit core really hard. I later do today. back. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Ba- I do back handsprings. What do you do for you? <laughs> <laughs> I like back handsprings. Why are you laughing, you asshole? <laughs> you, using my comparison for most of this fitness stuff is like, okay, well, if you're a person that wants to get in shape and you want to be flexible and have really good core strength, and then you say, okay, you can do yoga or you can do gymnastics. Well, after 10 years, if you do yoga, will you be able to do the stuff the gymnast does after 10 years? And if you do gymnastics after 10 years, will you be able to do the stuff the yoga person is doing after 10 years? And more than likely, in a situation like that. The gymnast will be able to do the yoga stuff, yeah. mm-hmm. but the yoga person will not even be close to doing the gymnast stuff. Yeah. Like so maybe you should go with gymnastics in that example. Yeah. Again, not saying yoga doesn't have any value. I think yoga is super, super cool, but it just depends on what you want for you and picking the right thing in the situation. And as an so adult, like, going and doing gymnastics is just, <laughs> it's almost ridiculous because of, like, unless you have really great progressions. And that's that's yeah. that's where it gets really tough. That's yeah, what I think you're gonna do I some see. of the gymnastics we you do in the CrossFit gym, which is like super low level, basic, right, basic, right, basic right. gymnastics. Like even muscle ups don't even have a difficulty rating in gymnastics. Right. Like they are considered a no rating. Yeah. They don't they don't get an A, B. They don't get an E. That's just what you do. They don't so get you can an do F. The other they stuff. get a basic <laughs> skill rating. It doesn't. Even, it's not even on the chart. So yeah, it, all, that, it all just depends <laughs> on your goal, and you should be training for your goal. So if my goal is to lean and tone, look in my swimsuit, I'm not gonna be powerlifting four days a week because that's not. What's that's not what's going to change my body in the way that I want to change it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with powerlifting. Some girls want to be the strongest they could be. That's freaking awesome. That's not my goal, and that right. doesn't drive me. It doesn't motivate. Me. It's okay. And that's both, okay. Both camps are perfectly that's fine. Exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So just train for your goal. Like if I look good in a bikini, I'm going to train a certain way. I'm going right. to do some cardio. Some. Some Metcons, I'm going to do some What would you call that program get, that you might do if you want to look good? Well, now you, you guys just made one. Uh, you guys My just, goal, come you on. You guys just made up the one that I wanted. So, I mean, it's pretty much everything that I think a female should do to get the strength and the body that they want, but not lose one for the other. It's like you're going to build mm-hmm. a body and build a strength, and they're going to go hand in hand instead of mm-hmm. just one or the other. See, and people, that's fine. Like some people are runners, and they enjoy running, and that's awesome, but don't expect to get an athletic, strong body if you're a runner because you're not building the muscles – for that you know so it's mm-hmm. like and there's nothing wrong with that body type but it's like i posted this thing on my instagram once and it was like a real thin chick marathon runner and it was like a sprinter with this big old ass and legs and someone's like how dare you knock one sport i'm like i'm not knocking a sport i'm just saying ladies if you want to look like this this is what you do if you want to look like this this is what you do i'm not knocking either one but i'm saying some of you are running because you think it's going to make you look like this chick on the right mm-hmm. but that's not how you look like that so just train for the goals that you want, you know? So yeah, usually the reason people are doing a specific sport is because their body, it really connects with that sport. Yeah, and they're you know, passionate some, and they like it. They like to run. That's their thing. Yeah. That their goal is not to look good in a bikini like mine. And that's right. great, you know? If, if you're if you're six foot three and you're 340 pounds, like, you're just naturally going to gravitate towards powerlifting. It just yeah. makes sense for you. Yeah. And, and, if yeah. you're, and if you're you as opposed to a six foot three, 400 pound guy, maybe you do take up something like, yeah. like running or CrossFit. Yeah. It's just more naturally for you. Not that you can't do any of the other yeah. stuff. It just makes more sense when you're trying to get in shape. Those are the things you just you go to first because that's just naturally yeah. how you're built. You're, you're a smaller person than the person that's over 300 pounds. Yeah. So train for your goal. And if you want to look good in a bikini, then... Focus on being good at every movement, not just being the strongest or the best or this. Focus on your core. Focus on gymnastics. Focus on body weight, strength. Focus on back squat. You know, everything needs to all tie into one program yeah. together. You can't leave one thing out because we're still trying to build an athlete. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, we still have a goal of being a good competitor because if one day you want to jump in a competition, I want to say, I got you ready for that at the same time. I got you that body that you wanted. You can mm-hmm. do both. It's not like you have to pick one over the other, you know. Yeah. But, but you can't deny as a female that if you lift, 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 lift all the time, that's all you do. You are going to start to get bigger. That's what 
muscles do. They grow the more you overload them. Mm -hmm. We can't deny them. So when someone says CrossFit's going to make you huge, it's not CrossFit that's making you huge. Some chicks just want to be the strongest, mm -hmm. and they sacrifice that sometimes to get there, and that's fine because mm -hmm. their goal is no longer to, to look good in that bikini. Their goal is now to be the best, and you're going to sacrifice a little bit when that's the goal. Yeah. And that's totally fine, but we all have goals, and I hate when someone tries to put theirs on me or mine on theirs. It's just like we're all doing our own thing. That's it, you know, respect each other. Like even sports, respect everyone for the sport that they do. Mm. Everyone hates on CrossFit on my Instagram or pull-ups. I'm like, you know what I do. Okay, if you're looking at my page, you think I'm not going to post CrossFit. Like you're stupid. Like don't talk <laughs> shit. Just go somewhere else, you know, like don't look <laughs> at my page. Like yeah. but it, I hate this like sport on sport bashing. Like yeah. I don't stand, stand there and make parody videos of, of bodybuilders because they look ridiculous. Yeah. Like I don't do that. Like I can respect you for what you do. Respect me yeah. for wanting to bounce around and lift weights and run and all that. That's <laughs> what I like to do. So it's like Yeah, let Jackie yeah. bounce around. <laughs> I mean, just let me do what I want. Easy. Well, it, it also drives me crazy when when people see videos of people that are brand new to CrossFit and they're doing something incorrectly. Yes. They're brand new to it. I'm like, "You guys go to fucking T-ball games and look at the kids swinging the bats and be yeah. like, "You're Who shitty." Yeah. I, I do, but only after a case of beer and if I'm wearing a wife beater. It's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, like they're brand new to baseball. Why are, you, why are you yelling at them? It's like these yeah. days you can only post something where your fucking form is perfect. And there's no one's perfect. We're all learning. We're all trying to get better. I just posted a deadlift. Someone's like, your ass is supposed to be lower. I said, no fucking shit. You know, like, what do you think I'm doing? I'm trying to become a better lifter. Like, mm. I don't need you Instagram coaching me. I have coaches. I'm just saying, hey, look, I deadlifted today. Here's my deadlift, you know. That's you know it's funny, it. Doug, dude. Uh, that attitude, like, no one comes out and says, Bro, you can't even swing that bat. Here, here's Jose Canseco's secret batting <laughs> yeah, technique. Exactly. If you do this, you'll fucking knock <laughs> that tee like, right yeah. off the or ball right off the fucking tee. You'll be a champ, little Todd, whatever your name is. That's what people think about training. Like, I can't snatch for Will. What is what did Piros Dimas do for his snatch? Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? That guy has been snatching since the age of like eight or whatever. And he's perfectly built yeah. to snatch. Like it's like, just annoying. Yeah. It's like mind your own business and do your own thing. You know, like focus on you. If you've put all your energy on on hating on everybody else, that's shitty. That's just a reflection of how, how shitty you feel about yourself. If I'm sitting here being like, Oh, that's stupid, what's he doing? What do I give a fuck? <laughs> Unless I'm jealous about what's he doing, that I have enough energy to More than likely. Out. It's, I mean, yeah. probably. It's, it's gotta be a warning that when you have a very strong organic powerful surge of emotion when you see something it's not the thing that's causing it it's, something's it's in you something and, internal and it would help yeah. for you to that's your first cue that gotta work on this yeah, yeah. <laughs> why 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 is it like, my life's too short to be like fuck her for being happy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right? that's basically what people are doing yeah. that bitch is skinny and happy <laughs> fuck her who when does someone, she think she is when someone hates on crossfit i'm like you're just showing your own insecurities because what do you give a fuck what's it got to do with you I don't Absolutely drive by tennis courts like, nothing. look at these so sons of bitches hate, swinging you know? tennis rackets. What do they think <laughs> they think they are playing tennis so and golfing? Yeah. You bastards. Uh, you should be lifting weights. So when you're training your female clients, like how do you how do you advise them or help them with dealing with the other people in their lives? Like socially, psychologically, like when you're trying to make a big change, there's always going to be those people that are already in your life that want you to stay the same that you are right now. And it makes them feel bad yeah. that you're making progress and they're going to kind of try to pull you back to your old you. Yeah. Like that. that's a that's a big thing to get over. Yeah. And it holds people back. Like, yeah. how do you, how do you battle women that? Do, do you have anything for women that? Women do ask me that. They'll be like, you know, how can I do this if my, if my friends don't diet and I'm trying to eat clean? And I'm like, you just have to put yourself in the best situations that you can. Mm. And sometimes you're going to be stuck out there and you have to. And you just have to, like, ignore ignore them. Just focus on your goal. Focus on you. Again, not what anyone else is doing. And just, mm. you could say respect me for what I do, you know. But sometimes it's easier to just, like, not. Like, if I'm eating dinner and all these people... I eat paleo and they're not. I might have a little bit of bread just because I don't want to be that weirdo making you feel like shit because you're not having any. Mm -hmm. I just want to. That's why I eat as clean as I can when I can because I'm saving those little things for when I am around people. I want to be social. I don't want to be the weirdo that can't go get a scoop of ice cream with people. Mm -hmm. You know, that sucks to be that person. Yeah. But you could still you could still uh, modify it and get to your goal. It doesn't mean you have to eat all the ice cream or you have to eat too much. Just have a little bit, just not enough to stick out, you know. Mm -hmm. But surround yourself with people with common goals. And I think that's the best thing about a CrossFit gym. Everyone is there to be a better version of themselves. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that or they would not be there. And they're there to encourage you. You mm -hmm. to keep going not to be like oh why are you doing this it's the people on the outside that are going to look at you and say why are you doing that that's so annoying you're getting too big oh you're getting too skinny those are the people that aren't a part of it and the mm -hmm. only way that i can make myself feel better about you doing something cooler than me is if i bring you down if i say cross is fucking stupid now i put you on my level right because i i I'm not doing it and mm. I'm jealous that you're doing something really cool but the mm. best way that I can justify to myself is if I knock you down mm. and that's why a lot of people hate is because they're jealous and they want to bring you back down to their level because now we're even because CrossFit sucks so you know yeah yeah. for so a lot of people cool I'm not doing it because it sucks anyway 
you know, like we realize like having a CrossFit gym to train at, you do have that community. And, and a lot of people, they train by themselves or they don't train in a CrossFit gym, they train in a regular gym, but they kind of want to do this type of stuff, yeah. they, you know, use the gymnast gymnastics rings and they want to do Olympic lifts and whatnot, but they don't really have a community. So we made sure when we started any of our programs for Road Regionals, the Muscle Game Challenge, for Barbell Bikini, Barbell Shredder, all of our programs have Facebook groups where every single person in the group has the exact same yeah. goal. Like, like even my wife right now, she's she's pregnant and she's in a Facebook group where everyone in that group is having a baby February. Mm -hmm. That way she can go yeah. in there and everyone has the exact mm -hmm. same goal and they're having the exact same experience yeah. at the exact same time because it would be really hard to find someone in town that had the exact same date yeah. for their baby to be due. So it's the same thing in the fitness world. It's nice to have everyone else in the group looking to lose 20 pounds just like you're looking to lose 20 pounds or looking to gain 20 pounds of muscle just like you're looking to gain 20 yeah. pounds of muscle and you can support each other because you know every single person you know hundreds of people in that group have the exact same goals and desires that you do you can put something out there you can ask a question that can help yeah. you because they've ha already had that experience you can you know vent your frustrations if, if you're not making really good progress or maybe maybe you're trying to gain muscle and you got sick and you lost five pounds and you're like yeah. fuck and then someone else comes in and says oh yeah i was sick for a week i lost 10 pounds it sucks man yeah, like, but i got it back you can do it too and they yeah. help you that that facebook group is your community it is your yeah. crossfit gym and it, it you need that because like i said you're going to go through ups and downs to and that one year goal they're never all going to be good days like you're going to need someone to be like it's all good just get back up and keep going oh you didn't hit that number you're supposed to hit it's mm -hmm. all good just try it again next time yeah but or you, you get a pr someone. and you put a video and everyone's like yeah. fuck yeah dude good job and yeah. then that's super motivating yeah. for you you need or you can even say something about food like you know i'm having trouble with this someone else could be like yeah you know what me too and so i found that if i do this around those people it just makes the situation easier but you want people going through the same thing as you so you can feed off of each other because some people have really good ideas about how to dodge those situations or be a part of situations without completely sabotaging your whole your whole plan that you got going do, do you think unfortunately trolls, we have run out of time do you think trolls we really have to go our yeah. comment feeds so on every post on <laughs> he the doesn't give a so shit you can, uh, shut <laughs> up. where can we find you on Instagram Jackie Jackie 585 on Instagram was it Jackie 585 Jackie 585 yes <laughs> sorry Chris uh, I'm gonna put my head. Jackie I'm gonna put my headphones down. No. Jackie. And Chris can make his point. Hey, guess what? I am never gonna right, fucking go, go. tell you what my point was until you die. I'm never gonna tell you what that point was. I mean, actually, <laughs> let us go 15 minutes further than I really wanted to go. So sorry. <laughs> no because point. this was oh. really great conversation. Now he's afraid to say anything. Now, now no, I'm, I'm just not out of spite. Right. Make sure you guys go to barbellshrug.com. <laughs> sign up for the newsletter. Check out Jackie's Instagram. And. Uh, and oh yeah! If you wanna, uh, why am I going? <laughs> why, you, why are you taking your clothes <laughs> off? You did that, and then I was like, this. "You guys are signaling to each other." Oh yeah! If you're interested in bar, if you're a lady and you would like to get leaner, you might want to go to barbellbikini.com. Uh, sign up for uh, well, what, find out more information. Really, yeah. yeah go to barbellbikini.com. Uh, if the landing page is up, like a coming soon page or the the pre-launch videos that kind of tell you a little bit about the program, you'll get a little gift when you put your name and email in, and then. Uh, if registration's open, then you can sign up. I got and all the all the information there. you need's on the page. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have something on my page where uh, where you can go and all that good stuff. Yeah. And then if you're a guy, you can go to barbellshredded.com because mm -hmm. we have a complimentary guys fat loss program on barbellshredded.com. No doubt. Hey, if guys. you're happy being fat, go get some ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at Ben and Jerry's in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, guys. To learn more about how you can support the show, go to barbellshrug.com and sign up for the newsletter.